Hey y'all, it's Kelt. The CEO of TikTok testified before a congressional committee, and we need to talk about it. NBC has composed a highlight reel, so let's watch that and then discuss. Roll clip. Does TikTok access the home Wi-Fi network? Has ByteDance spied on American citizens? I don't think that spying is the right way to describe it. The only face data that you get, that we collect, is when you use the filters to have, say, sunglasses on your face, we need to know where your eyes are. And Why do you need it, to know what the eyes are if you're not seeing if they're dilated? American data stored on American soil by an American company overseen by American personnel. We call this initiative Project Texas. Please rename your project. Texas is not the appropriate name. We stand for freedom and transparency, and we don't want your project. You damn well know that you cannot protect the data and security of this committee or the 150 million users of your app because it is an extension of the CCP. From the data it collects to the content it controls, TikTok is a grave threat of foreign influence in American life. With a lot of respect, American social companies don't have a good track record with data privacy and user security. I mean, look at Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. Madam Chair, my time is up. And if this committee gets its way, TikTok's time is up. So those of you who followed me for a while know that my background is in human intelligence. And I bring that up because my background as a human gives me a unique understanding of questioning and approach techniques. And with that, I say a lot of those dumb questions you just watched coming from members of Congress are not actually dumb questions because they're stupid. Those were done by design. The questions that the committee members asked were done in this way because they knew that under the rules of the committee, the CEO of TikTok would not be able to properly respond to those questions. This is a way to force the answer out of him that they want, not necessarily the truth. Multiple times during this hearing, he was interrupted. He was accused of lying when they didn't like his answer, and he was just flat out told that sometimes he could not respond to a question. Those questions that he wasn't allowed to respond to were really statements phrased to look like questions. And they do this because they know that every major news agency was going to be covering this hearing. It was going to be televised. Their hope is to get support of the American people for an outright ban of TikTok. When you get someone in a closed-ended question, such as a yes or no question, you can phrase the question in such a way that it doesn't matter how they answer, it looks bad for them. This is a trick that law enforcement agents do to force a confession or force you to consent to a search. Like asking a suspect, you don't mind that I search your vehicle today, do you? Regardless of how you answer that yes or no, the law enforcement agent can confer that you gave consent. So if you ask the TikTok CEO, does TikTok access the home Wi-Fi network, it's bad no matter how he answers that question, yes or no. If he says no, you claim that he's lying to a congressional committee because TikTok has to access the Wi-Fi network to reach the internet. That's how Wi-Fi and the internet works. If he answers yes and you don't allow him to elaborate on that, it sounds bad because people like my grandparents, rest their souls, would not understand that TikTok has to access a home Wi-Fi network to reach the internet. To them, it would just sound bad that TikTok was spying on the network. These questions are also asked in such a way to wear him down. He is one person answering multiple questions from multiple people. To him, it is multiple hours of nonstop questions. To them, it is just them asking questions until their time runs out or it's their turn again. Multiple hours which he has asked questions that do not make sense. He is interrupted. He is insulted. He is going to get frustrated. And that's what they want because they want him to appear frustrated, flustered, and not know what he's talking about because they can then paint it like he is attempting to hide something. And for all of that and how bad this was, he did an amazing job in his questioning. And when I say it was bad, if you've seen my content, it was bad enough that it's making someone like me come online and defend a CEO. Think about that for a second. But the idea that this committee hearing could drum up more public support for a nationwide banning of TikTok is concerning for multiple reasons. One, this would be the first social network that was banned in the United States. Granting the federal government the ability to ban websites and applications that it does not like sets a very dangerous precedent for free speech. If the government successfully bans TikTok, you should not think that, that is just going to stop at Chinese-owned applications. This would set the precedent for them to be able to ban any form of communication that they do not like under the guise of national security. And to be honest, the government has yet to demonstrate an actual national security risk for TikTok that doesn't exist with every other social media company out there. One of the claims that the U.S. government is attempting to make is that the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, would be able to use TikTok to force disinformation campaigns, such as disinformation campaigns about Taiwan. This is a risk that we run with any form of social media or communication. 
One of my more recent videos was about how a Twitter user by the name of Cat Turd is running a disinformation campaign on Twitter against John Fetterman, claiming that John Fetterman is now a body double. A disinformation campaign that has millions of views and is actively spreading. That is happening off TikTok. It is happening on Twitter. And speaking of Twitter, the United States government is claiming that TikTok is an issue because its ownership is through a Chinese company, when the second largest investor and shareholder in Twitter is now a Saudi Arabian prince. So TikTok is an issue due to ownership by a foreign entity, while the second largest owner of Twitter is a foreign entity. There's no talks about banning Twitter. In fact, many members of that committee praised the sell of Twitter to Elon Musk, the same sell that caused a Saudi Arabian prince to be the second largest shareholder. The foreign entity issue that committee is claiming is nothing more than xenophobia. Watch this. Here's the main point of concern. China's 2017 national intelligence law states very clearly that, quote, any organization or citizen shall support, assist, and cooperate with state intelligence work in accordance with the law and maintain the secrecy of all knowledge of state intelligence work. In other words, ByteDance and also your TikTok employees that live in China, they must cooperate with Chinese intelligence whenever they are called upon. And if they are called upon, they're bound to secrecy. That would include you. So, Mr. Chu, if the CCP tells ByteDance to turn over all data that TikTok has collected inside the U.S., even within Project Texas, do they have to do so, according to the Chinese law? Cong Congressman, first, I'm, I'm Singaporean. I'm sure you caught that Dan Crenshaw was implying that the CEO of TikTok would have to comply with that Chinese law, claiming that the CEO was a Chinese citizen. He's from Singapore. But Dan Crenshaw and possibly many others of that committee automatically just assumed that he was Chinese and under Chinese law. So yeah, xenophobia. But let's talk about that Chinese law that Dan Crenshaw mentioned. There is a law on the books that Chinese companies have to comply with Chinese intelligence. That's pretty much how it works in the United States also. United States law enforcement or intelligence agencies can simply get a subpoena and force a United States company to comply with their request. And Dan Crenshaw's little part about they have to be silent about it, that's just called a court gag order. That happens in the United States also. So their biggest worry is that a foreign entity is going to be able to use TikTok to get data on American citizens when the United States government uses other social media to get data on American citizens and foreign nationals. And even with that, foreign entities do not need TikTok to get data on American citizens when American social media companies are so lax with America's data. Do we all not remember the Facebook Cambridge Analytic debacle, in which Facebook turned over a large amount of user data to an analytics company for the Trump campaign? Facebook straight up got sued for that. Meaning the United States government is trying to ban TikTok for the hypothetical that that very same situation could happen with TikTok when it's already happened with Facebook. There was absolutely no threat of banning Facebook after that happened. Just the idea that Facebook would have to settle the lawsuit and possibly pay fines. Plus, there's no talk about banning Facebook because many members of Congress own stock in Meta, Facebook's parent company. And every time someone in our government mentions the idea of banning TikTok, Meta and Snapchat stock prices start going up. Meaning the very people on that committee talking about banning TikTok are profiting off the idea of banning TikTok. They're profiting off of it by owning stock in a major TikTok competitor who has spent millions of dollars trying to discredit and smear TikTok. Why? Because TikTok is costing companies like Meta money. When is the last time you heard about a viral trend starting on Facebook or Instagram? It's been quite a while since you've heard that, and this is one of the issues that this committee and other politicians are worried about. They're worried about the fact that it's not just viral trends that start on TikTok, but the amount of political activism that starts and is carried out through TikTok. A large amount of political activism done by millennials and especially Gen Z starts and happens on TikTok. We can thank TikTok for Gen Z coming out in force to the 2020 elections and then in the midterms. And the idea of higher turnout of Gen Z voters scares conservative politicians and pundits. After the recent midterm elections, we saw conservative pundits using Twitter calling for an increase of the voting age to at least 21. Because voters aged 18 to 21 are the reasons why conservatives did not do as well in the midterms as they thought they would. Gen Z saved us from having both a conservative GOP-ran House and Senate. And they did that activism through one of their favorite sites, TikTok. While the general public may view TikTok as just a silly kids dancing app, that is absolutely not the case. Just like YouTube, if you want to learn about it, you can find someone talking about it on TikTok. People have amassed large followings on TikTok talking about subjects such as woodworking, cooking, or even politics. I personally have gained over 600,000 followers on TikTok talking about political activism, counter-extremism, and counter-disinformation. It is not just a silly little dancing app that the Chinese government is going to use to steal our data. It is a very important asset to our political activism, our sharing of knowledge, 
and our free speech. The proposed ban on TikTok is politically motivated and fueled by xenophobia and is a direct attack on American citizens' rights. Reach out to your representatives, both in the House and the Senate, and tell them that you do not want this attack on our free speech and to back off TikTok. And let them know that if they actually cared about our privacy and our data, they'd be working to strengthen American privacy laws instead of attempting to ban an app that they don't like. We showed them multiple times that we have strength in numbers, and that scares them. Do not let them take away our tools to organize and rally.